Well, a world first in Australia, where Parliament there has given a green light to a bill banning social media for users under the age of 16. Anybody out there who's got kids, um, listen up. The bill passed comfortably in the Senate with backing from both the government and opposition members. The law includes potential fines for social media companies if they don't take adequate steps to prevent under 16-year-olds from using their services. Andrew uh, Shabilsky is a, a professor of human behaviour and technology at the University of Oxford and he joins us now from London. Um, I've got so many questions on this, but first and foremost, how does the Australian government expect to be able to enforce this legislation? <laughs> and what are, they, what are they expecting of the social media companies and how are they going to police this? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't think anyone knows the answer to that question. Um, there really isn't a particularly clear plan here um, mm. about how you would enforce something like uh, age targets uh, on users. We know that the technology to estimate ages is fundamentally flawed. Uh, and I don't think anybody wants to be up uploading their passports or their personal information or their driving licenses uh, to hop on Instagram. We know that there are huge problems um, around yeah. the use of social media um, and kids under the age of 18. We know, you know, there is... Uh, let, let's just talk about what, what some of those issues are and why it is yeah. that Australia has made this move. Yeah, so, I mean, there are some pretty concrete things, uh, you know, dangers of the internet and dangers of social media. Uh, these are things that are very boring. Uh, these, some of these things are like distracted driving. Um, you know, thousands of people are killed every year uh, in the United States and in the EU uh, and in Australia from distracted driving, mm. using social media, literally uh, on front of faces. And obviously these websites are used um, for people who want to sexually exploit young people uh, and groom them. Um, and and so there's some pretty dark communities in terms of things like self-harm uh, and eating disorders. Uh, but it really, it, nothing in this ban actually helps young people or empowers families to kind of tackle those kind of really tough online harms. This is much more of a feel good measure um, to like kind of try to put this back on platforms. Um, but, but really there's no way for it to be effective. What are some of the other ways that other governments around the world are trying to tackle this? We know that there, you know, there is a lot of harm to teenagers from social media. We also know, and I mean, many, many teenagers will, will agree that they, they wish they had no access to social media, but they do, of course. Um, others will say that there's, you know, there's a lot of good that comes from social media. How are other governments trying to cope? Well, so other countries have tried, actually, you know, versions of what uh, the Australians are about to embark on. Uh, South Korea actually turned the internet off uh, for all under 18s. Uh, for more than a decade. Um, and, you know, they found that none of the technology actually worked. Uh, when it did work, um, there was no savings to well-being, you know, no improvements to sleep, no, no changes to well-being or school marks. Uh, and ultimately, it was shown to be unconstitutional. Uh, in China, they tried something similar uh, with limiting uh, young people to three hours a day of, uh, three hours a week, sorry, of video game play. Uh, and the best data that we have out of that shows it's failed. Um, I'm, I'm much more optimistic about places like here in the UK uh, where we're actually listening to young people. Uh, we're listening to researchers yeah. like myself in terms of making online environments safer, uh, as opposed to just kind of sticking our head in the sand and just pretending like this social media thing is just going to go away. Mm. So what are you suggesting um, as a uh, an improvement um, here? I mean, and should this... Should this even be in the sort of public sphere? I mean, obviously, governments are there to help protect us. Um, but, you know, how much onus should be on social media companies themselves? Yeah, so I think there needs to be a huge, huge burden needs to be placed on social media firms. First of all, they, they need to be able to share, they, they need to be forced mm. to share the data that they have on young people, not with advertisers, but with researchers, so that we can actually unpick the harms and the benefits of these online platforms. Mm. Um, second, I mean, I think it's crazy that the tax money that these firms pay when they pay it, it goes to filling potholes, uh, you know, and, and then kind of, you know, social, you know, different services. It should go to actually understanding and supporting young people, 
finding them where they are. And then absolutely, we need ethical design codes. We need to be able to hold tech companies to account when they do, when, when young people do fall through the cracks. Kind of mm -hmm. setting a 16, setting a ban at 16, it, what it does is it actually absolves tech but platforms of responsibility. If something bad happens on a platform, they're going to say, and a young person say uses a VPN or they sneak onto a platform somehow, they're going to say, well, it's not our fault. You know, we put in the best technologies that exist. Um, and they, mm. they don't need to actually make their platform safer or better. Back end of 2024, um, and of course, Elon Musk um, has um, tied himself to the hip of the president-elect who will be inaugurated in America um, on January the 20th. Uh, earlier this month, um, Elon Musk posted on X about this very legislation in Australia, saying, seems like a backdoor way to control access to the internet by all Australians. Is this fear by social media leaders something that could happen? <laughs> um, well, I'm not sure. I mean, a broken clock is, is right twice a day. Um, but, but, but no, I mean, I, I think that there are real human rights implications <laughs> for this, you know, depending on how it's implemented. Um, you know, you know, really, you know, the, the, Australia is a signatory to the UN Charter of the Rights of the Child. And, you know, we, we, young people have a right to information, like upwards of 60% of young people uh, in Australia get, get their news from social media. Uh, children have a right to play uh, and, and young people play through these online platforms. And so, you know, in Korea, ultimately their laws were repealed. Uh, these bans and these limits were repealed because they they violated the the, the Korean constitution, um, and and I really don't see. Uh, I mean, Elon's right here, um, and and if you read the statements by by Meta, you know, and uh, and Snap, um, they're pretty clear that actually nothing in this legislation is going to make a single kid safer. This mm -hmm. is the equivalent of taking your shoes off at the airport. Um, it, it doesn't make flying any safer, and and this is also this is well this is theater. This is well being theater.